to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. How do you know this book, the Bible, is from God? How do we know that it's just not the figment of man's imagination? Have we been lied to? Have we been duped? Or is the Bible, is this the inspired Word of God from the mouth of God that tells us how to get to heaven? We're so glad that you've joined us for our study today. As always, if you don't have your Bible handy, we want you to get it out and have it ready because today, we're going to show evidence that proves that the Bible is absolutely the Word of God, and we hope that encourages us to study it, to love it, and to live by it every day of our life. And so stay tuned as we think about this amazing subject. We're so glad that you've joined us for our study today. As always, we want you to know that today's lesson is being brought to you by individual Christians and congregations of the Church of Christ. The Lord's Church in your local area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. Whether that be on Sunday for worship or Wednesday for Bible study, you would be an honored guest at any of their assemblies. You'll find people there who love God, who love others, and who are deeply concerned about the souls of men and women. Friend, if you've got a Bible question, maybe you're wondering about salvation or the church or, or any number of religious uh, matters, you'll find people in the Lord's church in your local area who'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God with you in kindness and love and look at the truth of God's Word. Also, here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your desire to know God better. We encourage you to check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can access all our lessons. They're available to you free of charge. In fact, if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our lessons, just go to our website, fill out a media request form. We'd be happy to make that available to you as a digital download or other formats if you need that as well. And friend, we want to encourage you also to check us out on Facebook, like our Facebook page, follow us on that. Great way to keep up with things that we're doing. And then, of course, in our fast-paced world today, where everybody's got a smartphone, we want to encourage you to check out the Gospel of Christ app that's available in the respective Play Stores. You can get it there, and it's a great way to keep up with our new lessons, what we're doing, and just so that you can know how we're trying to spread the Gospel and reach people with the news of Jesus Christ. And as always... We want to thank you today for joining us for our study. Hope you've got your Bible ready. Let's look to the Word of God together. The Apostle Paul said, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Is the Bible really inspired of God? And, and what do we mean when we say the Bible is inspired of God? And, and how can we know? How can I know? What evidence is there that, that this book, the Bible, is from Almighty God. Friend, let me begin by noting why this is such an important subject. This is an important subject because there's a lot of people who, although they may think the Bible has some good moral and ethical teachings, that it's really just another book. Is that really what the Bible is? It's not what Peter said to Jesus. Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. John chapter 12, verse 48, it's not what Jesus said either. Jesus said, he who rejects me and does not believe my word has that which judges him. Well, what is it, Lord? The word that I've spoken will judge him in the last day. And so either this book is just some good moral and ethical teaching or it has the words of eternal life. And when I stand before God, it's what's going to be my judge. Friend, inspiration is so important today to understand because there is so much 
evolution and, and, and humanism that's being taught in our schools. We're being taught that, that man is kind of the, it's all about man, that, that man evolved to the highest level on the rung of species and, and it's all about us and we evolved and got here. Is that really true? Did I just evolve from lower animals and is everything about me? Genesis 1 1, 1 1 tells us that's not the case. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The heavens and the earth proclaim that they are the handiwork of God. Genesis 1 1, Psalm 19 1. The, 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 friend, and so as we think about this idea, consider if it's all about evolving or just another species or if the Bible's true and it came from God and we're, we're the product of God's creative hand. It's also important to understand inspiration because there's so much religious skepticism today. One person believes one thing, another person believes another thing. There's a lot of people who are skeptical about a whole litany of ideas. Is there anything by which we can know absolute truth absolute subjective truth and stand upon that. Well, friend, that's what the Bible claims. You can know the truth and the truth will make you free. John chapter 8, verse number 32. Friend, consider this also. Inspiration is so important because if the Bible is not inspired of God, if this book is not from Almighty God, if we do not have the Word of God today, then everything we do is worthless and in vain. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, as he thought about the resurrection, if Jesus is not raised from the dead, then of all people, you Christians are the most pitiable. Well, the same thing can be true, said about the Bible. If this is not from God, then everything we do is worthless and in vain. But if this book is from God, and friend, that takes on a whole new light. That changes the perspective that gives everything a brighter look and hope in every way. And of course, the Bible doesn't teach me just to think or to suppose or, or to assume that this is the Word of God. Reli understanding Bible inspiration is important because the Bible demands that we prove all things. Real faith is based on substance and it's based on evidence. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number one. And the Bible demands that we prove all things, hold fast that which good. First Thessalonians 5, verse 21. Well, we don't walk by sight right now. We walk by faith and faith is based on the evidence and faith is based on the word of God. Romans 10, verse 17. And so saying we believe, and proving that are two different things. This is why Christians are taught, be ready always to give an answer for the reason of the hope that is within you. And so what answer, what proof, what evidence can we give that the words of this book are from the mouth of our Creator, Almighty God? Now, as we think about inspiration, let's define our terms. Let's understand what we mean. What is, the, what is the Bible's claim to inspiration? What does it say? Well, of course, the Bible claims to be of divine origin. Do you remember 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 and 17? The Apostle Paul says, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for proof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. That word there for inspiration in the original language is a compound word, is the word theos, which is the word for God, and the word panoustos, which literally means to exhale. And so when we say, when God says the Bible is inspired, what does that mean? Literally? God exhaled, and on the breath that came out of his mouth were the very words we have in the Bible. Let, 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 let's define it this way. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 19 through 21, the Bible says this, Holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. That word moved carries the idea of guided. 
the men of the Bible who may have may Paul or Mark or Luke or John, the uh, uh, inspired apostles, how did the process of inspiration work? Those men were under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and the end result was not man's word, but God's word. Listen to 1 Corinthians 14, 37. Here's the claim of God. If any man thinks himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge the things that I write to you, Paul said. These, the end result, these are the commands of God. The entirety of your word is truth. Every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. And so the Bible makes the claim that this book, came from the mouth of God. Although human beings may have taken up pen, the Holy Spirit guided that process, and what they wrote in its entirety was the Word of Almighty God. As you think about the idea of inspiration, inspiration is full and complete, meaning that this book has everything I need, and I don't need anything else to get to heaven. 2 Peter 1 verse 3 says that God has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Jesus promised the apostles when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He'll guide you into all truth. Everything we need to go to heaven, all truth, it's full and complete. The Bible claims that it is verbally inspired. 2 Samuel 23, verse 2, David said, this is the picture of what we're talking about, His word was on my tongue. When Paul got up and spoke in Mars Hill in Acts chapter 17, whose word was that? When, when John or Luke or Mark, whose word was that? It's verbal. It's the word of God coming from the mouth and the tongue and the pen of men. The original word of God is infallible. The Bible says in James 1.25, we have the perfect law of liberty. It is absolute truth. John chapter 17, verse number 17. And friend, when we talk about inspiration, please understand also, inspiration means it's authoritative. This is the final word on all matters. This is what matters. This will be my judge. John 12, 48, Jesus said, He who rejects me and does not receive my word has that which judges him. The word I've spoken will judge him in the last day. And so we've seen the importance of understanding about inspiration. We've seen what the Bible claims, the word of God claims about inspiration. How do we know that? What proof is there that the Bible is from God? Let me offer several of those today. One of them is the uniqueness of the Bible. One of the most, the most unique book ever written. 66 books contained within the Bible, written by about 40 different writers over a period of about 1,500 years. Many were from different countries, spoke different languages. Many of them did not know each other. They were of different trades, different backgrounds, different intellects, different socioeconomic backgrounds. But all of them have such a, a complete unity on all the subjects the Bible speaks on. Imagine a book written today, say maybe the physician's desk reference, where you might have multiple people writing and taking part in that, and yet you're going to have varying and different opinions even on some of the same subjects. All the Bible writers are in harmony. It's unique. It's amazing. Its uniqueness is a testament and a tribute to its inspiration. But here's one of the most powerful. How do we know that the Bible is inspired, probably one of the single greatest ways to prove the inspiration of Scripture is by the prophecy that we find inside of it. Now, prophecy is defined as the ability to foretell, to tell, or to foretell future events with such exacting accuracy and minute detail that it would be impossible for the person telling that to know without divine help. We're not talking about a fortune teller who will get you on the phone and 
already probably has a background of you connected to your phone number or social or whatever, and then kind of leads you into certain questions and answers. That's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about fortune tellers or astrologers or palm readers or not, not those kind of things. We're talking about such exacting, minute detail that it would be impossible to know that without divine help. Let me give you some examples. Think about the captivity, the 70 years of captivity that God's people are promised to go in during the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 25, verses 9 through 12, and in Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 10 through 12, God says to his people that they will go into 70 years of harsh captivity under the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. After that time has expired, God was going to raise up a man by the name of Cyrus, the king of Persia, Isaiah 44, 28, Isaiah 45, 1, and that time would be fulfilled and God's people would be allowed to go back home. How did, how did Jeremiah know that was going to happen? How did he know the length of time? How did he know the name of the man who would do it and the name of the man who would let him go? Really no way to know that without God telling him. Think about things related to uh, the cross of Jesus. In Psalm 22, a thousand years before, it talks about Jesus' garment being divided. It talks about him being thirsty. It talks about dogs, all the people surrounding it. It talks about a multiplicity of details there at the cross. And every one of those exactly came true. Zechariah 12 and 13. It talks about uh, Judas, one who's going to betray him. 30 pieces of silver. They take the money. They buy a potter's field with that. How, how the 30 pieces of silver, what they did with it? And friend, these, this is just barely scratching the surface on all the prophecy that you find in the Bible, that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem, prophesied hundreds of years in Micah chapter 5 before that happened. And it came true exactly like God said it would. Friend, if you want, really want to lift up your faith and be encouraged in the inspiration of the Bible, look at the multiplicity of prophecies that have been made throughout Scripture. Somebody once looked at all those. And as they looked at them, I think they picked out 10 of those. And they looked at the statistical probability of all 10 of those being right. And it was such a large number that someone once said, if you took the state of Texas and you filled quarters two foot high and you take one quarter and throw it out in the middle of that state, the chance of somebody fulfilling all 10 of those prophecies is about the same as you going out and finding that one quarter in the middle of Texas. What's the chances that prophecy after prophecy after prophecy are fulfilled, every one of them in exact detail? How did, how did Isaiah know that? How did Jeremiah know that? How did Micah know that? How did David, a thousand years before the death of Jesus, know exactly how he would die, the things that would happen there? There's no way. These men could have known that unless God told them. And friend, that's the whole idea. The Bible is not man, man's opinion, man's ideas, man's best guesses. The Bible is the divine product of Almighty God. Now, let me share with you some other ways that we can know that the Bible is inspired of God. There's some evidence and there's some proof in the Bible that, that, that helps us to see that it is indeed the Word of God. I want you to take your Bible and look in Job chapter 26. There's some things that man hasn't always known that the Bible told us. One of those things is about the suspension of the earth. Verse number 7. The scripture says, God stretches out the north over empty space. He hangs the earth on nothing. The writers of the Bible just don't make the scientific blunders that many people today make. In Job 26, 7, God said the earth is suspended on nothing. Now, did you know that throughout history, men have not always believed that? In fact, a predominant theory was that one time the Greek goddess Atlas was holding the earth up on his shoulders. Other times in history, 
I know it's a far-fetched idea to think about, but there, there's an idea that there were four elephants. The earth was sitting on the back of four elephants, and those four elephants were standing on a giant turtle. Now, friend, that's what people really used to believe. And yet all along, we know now that the earth is suspended on nothing. How is it? Here's the question. Ancient Greeks and Romans, they, did, they didn't believe that. They were one of the most advanced people in their time, and yet they believe it was held in place on the back or the neck of the god Atlas. How is it that Job, a book which takes, takes early back to the days of Genesis, one of, the, one of the first writings, how is it that Job knew that? Well, friend, the only way Job could know that with such exacting certainty was if God told him. And friend, that evidence helps us to see the Bible is from God. Let, let me give you another example. Open your Bible, if you would, to Isaiah chapter 40. There's other facts that we find in the Bible that help us to understand this isn't just a book of men. Look at chapter 40, verse number 22. Listen to what the Bible says about God and the earth. It is He who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. It's just been a, a few centuries back that scientists and, and teachers of the day, they believed the earth was flat. And many of those people thought that if you were to go too far out, let's say you were to take out a ship and you were to go too far out, that you would actually just fall off and that the earth was flat and it wasn't like that. In fact, during the time the Bible was written, a lot of people believed that way. It, it, again, argued that should you go too far, you'd just fall off the edge. The early Greeks, some of them suggested the roundness of the earth, but even during the time of Columbus, many people believed that you couldn't go out too far, you just kind of fall off. How? In Isaiah 40, verse number 22, how is it that the Bible paints that picture of a round earth? How, how did Isaiah know that? Look at the picture again. Here's God. It is He who sits above the circle of the earth. The word in Hebrew for circle has a more exact connotation of a spear or roundness to it. It's God sitting above the spear of the earth. How did Isaiah know that? Before the telescopes? Before, how could all that be true? Friend, there's only one way. The only way in a time when a lot of people probably didn't believe that either, that Isaiah knew that was because God told him. And friend, if that's the case, then the Bible is not Isaiah's or Job's or somebody else's words. The, Isaiah, the book of Isaiah and the Bible is the words of Almighty God. Here's another really interesting one. Look in your Bible in Psalm chapter 8. Maybe you've heard about this one before. It's a beautiful psalm. Look at what it says in Psalm 8, verse number 8. The Bible says, The birds of the air and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the sea. One of the greater finds of this century has to do with that of oceanography. A man by the name of Matthew Fontaine Murray discovered the sailing paths in the sea. The story goes as such. One day, when he had fallen ill, he had his son come in and read to him from the 8th Psalm. And the son read this exact verse. He read that God put under man the fowls of the air, the fish of the sea, that passed through the paths of the sea. And he said to his son, read that again. And upon hearing it the second time, Mr. Murray said, if the word of God says there are paths in the sea, they must be there and I will find them. Today, Matthew Fontaine Murray is known as the father of oceanography. He founded the Annapolis Academy in Richmond, Virginia. There is a statue of Mr. Murray with a Bible in one hand and charts in the sea of the other. In fact, you can look and see those, those paths which ships still use today are there in the sea. And, and all along, God had told us that in the Bible. And so its uniqueness 
It's prophecy. We could talk about archaeology. You could talk about geography, the science found in it. That there's a, there's a multiplicity of ways you can prove the Bible is inspired of God. But what does all that mean? If we can know the Bible is inspired, that it comes from the mouth of Almighty God, what does that mean for me and you today? My friend, that means I need to live it every day. It isn't just a good book of good suggestions. This book has the words of eternal life. John chapter 6, verse 68. This book is everything I need for life and godliness. 2 Peter 1, verse 3. It isn't enough just to pay lip service and say, Lord, Lord. You've got to do what it says. Matthew 7, verse 21. The application is this. Not only must I live it, I've got to love it. Oh, how I love your law, the psalmist said. It is my meditation all the day. I've got to love God's Word with all my heart. Realize it's precious like treasure, Psalm 19, verses 6 through 10, to honor it every day by living my life according to it and, and doing what I can to be faithful to God. And then, my friend, you can't sit on it. If this is the Word of God, You've got to let others know about it. Jesus said, go into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. Matthew 28, 18. Him we preach, warning every man, teaching every man, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Colossians chapter 1, verse number 28. And so I live by the Bible, I love it, and I want to let others know that message. And friend, that begins with you today. Maybe you've never seen the evidence. Maybe no one had ever talked to you about the Bible being the inspired Word of God, and maybe you've seen that today, and, and you want to do what God says. Friend, it's not hard. In Acts 18, 8, the Bible says, Many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed, and were baptized. Have you heard the message about Jesus? Do you believe that message is true? Would you turn from a life of sin and obedience to God and obey the gospel? If you'd like to learn more about that, we'd love to study with you, and we hope you'll join us next time as we study more from the gospel of Christ. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, Internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. The gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On demand, and downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the Gospel of Christ.